So when it comes to electrical work, it oftentimes does not come down to the tools you're using or even the materials that you're installing. It comes down to you as the installer as to whether or not you installed them properly. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over some of the biggest mistakes that not only DIYers make, but also some electricians make when installing these receptacles. So I'm gonna be showing you exactly what they are, and I'm also gonna be showing you how they should be done or some better practices in order to make sure that these are not gonna be a safety hazard and they're gonna last for a very long time. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so for this first mistake, it comes down to selecting the proper receptacle for the circuit you're installing it on. Now, this is a 15 amp receptacle. This is a 20 amp receptacle. Well, when you go to select which receptacle you're going to install on a circuit, you need to know what wiring is running in that wall and what circuit breaker is on that circuit. So where the big mistake comes in is oftentimes people don't know any better, they'll just pick up one of these 20 amp receptacles and they just add it to their circuit. Well, the problem is if you have a 15 amp circuit breaker with a 20 amp receptacle like this, which is able to accept 20 amp cords, you run the risk of pulling too much power for that circuit and tripping the breaker. But that is actually the good news in that that breaker is doing its job and it's disconnecting the power so that it does not start a fire. Where the problem comes in is oftentimes on a 15 amp circuit, it is wired using 14 gauge wire. Well, that 14 gauge wire is only rated for up to 15 amps. So if you plug something into this 20 amp receptacle that's pulling more than 15 amps, it's gonna heat this wiring up. If the circuit breaker does not do its job, then you run a very serious risk of causing this wiring not only to heat up, but get so hot that it causes a fire. So super important that you choose the proper receptacle for the circuit that you are installing it on. You can put 15 amp receptacles on a 20 amp circuit with 12 gauge wire, but you can never put a 20 amp receptacle on a 15 amp circuit with 14 gauge wire, or you run the risk of starting a fire. All right, so for this next really big mistake, it comes down to reverse polarity. And that is where when you're installing your wires onto the receptacle, if we flip it over here to this side, we've got our gold terminal screws over here, and we've got our white neutral wire connected to those screws. If we flip it over here to this other side where we have these silver colored screws, that is where some people will mistakenly take their hot or black line wire and put it around that terminal screw and tighten it down on this side. This is completely backwards and that's why it's referred to as reverse polarity. And the big issues that can come from doing this is when you plug an appliance into this receptacle, it is now being fed the power on the neutral side or the incorrect side of this receptacle on this hole right here. When that happens, that means that, that power is not only flowing into this receptacle the wrong way, but it's then flowing into whatever you're plugging into this the wrong direction as well. And that can lead to damaging whatever it is that you're installing it into, but it can also create a shock or electrocution hazard that can all be completely negated just by putting the wires on the proper terminal screws. So this is what it should look like. Your black or hot wire should be going to the brass colored screws. In some cases, they look very gold. Either way, hot goes to brass or gold, and white or neutral always goes to the light side, which is silver. So as long as you connect these properly, you won't have an issue with that. All right, so for this next really big mistake, this comes down to not getting the terminal screws tightened down properly. If it's not tightened down properly, over time, this wire could become very loose and eventually come off of that terminal screw or if it doesn't come off the terminal screw, all it has to do is be loose just like that. And this can actually cause arcing to happen in that box. Arcing can lead to all kinds of things, including a fire. So oftentimes what happens is either people are in a hurry or they are using the wrong kind of screwdriver. They try to tighten it down. It keeps camming out. So they're not able to get it tightened down the way that it should. And it just allows for that wire to be a little bit loose. And again, over time, it's just gonna get looser. Depending on the manufacturer of the receptacle as they're all going to vary, but typically speaking, the terminal screws will need to be tightened down to between nine and 14 inch pounds. And now I'm gonna show you with this torque screwdriver what that looks like. So I tighten these down pretty well. So let's go ahead and start turning it. So as you can see, I have about eight inch pounds on this when I tighten it down. So per almost every manufacturer, that is not enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep turning it. 
and I'm gonna get it to around, there we go, I have it set for 12 inch pounds. So this is a perfect example of while it was tight, it could have been tighter. And depending on the screwdriver that you're using, a lot of times Phillips head bits, when you start getting it down tight, they start to cam out and you might not always be able to get it down as tight as you should. So super important that you make sure that these are getting torqued down properly so that they are not loose at all, causing any kind of arcing and causing a possible fire. Now, obviously pretty much nobody is using a torque screwdriver, but per these examples, as you can see, as long as you tighten it down pretty hard, then you're just not really gonna have any issues at all. If you're interested in having a torque screwdriver, this one is actually really good for the money. I'll have links for all of this and anything else you see in this video, I'll have links for it down in the description down below. And when you click on those links, it'll take you directly to whatever you're looking for so you can check them all out for yourself. And the mistake that comes in when using these residential grade receptacles is when we turn it over here to the back, there are these speed wiring or backstabbing holes right here. But I know too many electricians and I've seen it for myself where these are prone to fail. There's a very thin piece of metal inside of this outlet here that when you go and you insert your 14 gauge wire, because that's the max that they usually accept and you push it in to one of those speed wiring holes so now it's in there it's locked into place that very thin piece of metal is holding that down and over time due to the heating that comes with using a receptacle they get loose over time and sometimes it's fairly quickly to where you might start seeing your receptacles are working intermittently that causes that arcing it gets very hot and fires can happen so this is one of the number one service calls that a lot of electricians get so i myself and every electrician that i've personally talked to recommend do not use the speed wiring or backstabbing holes it is far better to use the side wiring which is the terminal screws making sure you have that nice mechanical connection and once you have that nice mechanical connection you're going to have that good connection for many many years and you don't have to worry about it and look at how easy i can remove this wire just by twisting it and it comes right out. So just goes to show you that that thin piece of metal is not doing much. All right, so for this next really big mistake, this is also incredibly, incredibly common. And that's when somebody takes their receptacle, they take their freshly stripped wiring, they put it around the terminal screw, they go and they tighten it down and they think this is good. Well, do you see the issue with this? Yeah, the big mistake here is they stripped off way too much insulation. This is going to be energized when power is flowing to this receptacle. And with this wiring just being exposed, that can pose a serious risk for arcing, which then can lead to overheating. It can lead to short circuits and it can lead to fire. Now, conversely, if I go ahead and I take this wire off of this terminal screw, and then I flip it over here to this other side. Then I tighten that one down. Well, do you see the issue with this one? Yeah, not enough insulation was removed. And if we look up underneath of that terminal screw there, we can see that that insulation is up underneath of that terminal screw, which means that we're not getting a good connection with the wiring either. And if this wire was to move at all, because the terminal screw was not clamped down all the way onto the wiring, if that was to move at all, now it becomes super loose. And again, a loose wire has the potential for leading to overheating and possible fires. So it is incredibly important to make sure that you are stripping off the proper amount of insulation to where you do not have any exposed coming out of the back, but where you do have enough cut off to where the copper that's on that wire is completely underneath of this terminal screw and making contact with it. Now, as a tip with these, on a lot of these receptacles, if you flip it over to the back, you will see here this little indentation in the receptacle, and it actually says strip gauge. But be careful because a lot of times on these residential grade receptacles, that strip gauge is actually for your speed wiring holes. So can't stress it enough, super, super important to make sure that you get the proper amount of insulation removed from the wiring before it gets connected to the device so that it lasts for a very long time and it does not create a safety issue or a fire hazard. All right, so for this next really big mistake, this is probably the most common mistake that DIYers make when installing these receptacles. So the issue with this is I wrapped my J-hook around this terminal screw in the incorrect direction. I wrapped it around it in a counterclockwise direction. So what it's naturally going to want to do as we're tightening this down is it's going to want to push that wire out and away from the terminal screw, which is gonna create a suboptimal connection. Now this is especially true with stranded wire. So if I wrap that stranded wire around that terminal screw in a counterclockwise direction, and I start to tighten that terminal screw down, watch it what happens to all of those strands. See how it's pushing it away from the terminal screw? It is pushing all of those strands out and away 
from that terminal screw to where we've got loose strands that are no longer underneath of that terminal screw because that terminal screw was being turned in the opposite direction as those strands were going around it. All right, so now this time, let's take our stranded wire, wrap it around in the correct or clockwise direction and see if we don't get better results. By putting around in that clockwise direction, it should cause those strands and that wiring to be pulled in tighter to that terminal screw. And so as you can see, just like that, it did exactly that. It did not push the strands out and away to where they would be loose. It grabbed onto those wires, especially the tighter it got, and it helped to wrap it around the center of that terminal screw to where it's nice and tight. And there's gonna be a very good connection here for a very long time. All right, so for this next really big mistake, I call this one the double stacker. And that's when people are wanting to tie into a circuit somewhere, whether they wanna install lights with a light switch, or they wanna add a receptacle somewhere, and they're gonna use a receptacle as a means for supplying that power. So they take the existing receptacle out, they see that both terminal screws already have wires underneath of them. They will then just take one of the terminal screws, they will loosen it up. They will then take their new wiring that they're wanting to tie into this receptacle here and on this circuit, and they will wrap it up underneath of that terminal screw just like that, and then they will go and they will tighten it down. Well, this is a huge no-no. Not only is this against code because no manufacturer allows for more than one wire to be underneath of each individual terminal screw, but this is also very, very dangerous because over time, it does not take much for one of these wires to shift a little bit. And if just one of these wires gets a little bit loose, well, then the other one is too you could run the risk of one of the wires completely coming off of the terminal screw or them just being in there loose. And again, here we are talking about a loose connection again, which can lead to overheating and possible fire hazard. So again, never, ever, ever double stack a terminal screw because not only is it against code, it's also very dangerous. All right, so for this next big mistake, this is another really common one, of course, and that comes down to when you go to replace a receptacle with a new one or you're just wanting to install a different device, you remove the receptacle out of the box, you go and you take your wiring off of that receptacle. And then whether you're installing a new receptacle and you wanna use the same wiring again, and especially this comes in if you go to more of a commercial grade or a GFCI, which I highly recommend, they're just made a lot better. But these commercial grade receptacles do not require you to wrap it around the terminal screw to make the connection. Instead, again, they have what's called back wiring. And that's where there's a little metal plate inside that as you tighten down the terminal screw and you put your wire in there, that plate is going to sandwich down on it like a vise or a clamp. But what oftentimes happens is when you're installing a device like this, instead of having the hooks on them, what a lot of people will do is they will just take that hook because they know that it needs to be straightened out. And then they'll go to install this into the receptacle, tighten it down, and they will think this is good. Well, here's the problem with that. If I go ahead and I remove this wire from this receptacle that I just put in there, when I went and I straightened this wire out, I weakened this wire. Well, when the original hooks were made, when this copper got bent, it actually weakened the copper. But just bending it that one way is totally fine. Problem comes in, especially with copper, when you go and start bending it other directions, it causes it to become work hardened. And when it becomes work hardened, it becomes very brittle and very easy for it to then break off, especially at the point as to where that hook originally started at because that's where the majority of the force was put. And this is especially true if you've got a wire that's got nicks on it already. When you go to straighten this out, it's gonna make it extremely brittle to where over time, it really would not be surprising for that copper to just break off. This wire is gonna come out. Obviously the receptacle is not gonna work because there's no longer a wire connected to it. But now you've got a loose wire in the box that could cause all kinds of issues. Again, arcing, fire, shock hazard. So it's extremely important that when you go and take these J hooks off of terminal screws, especially ones that have been there for a while, it is really important that you cut that original J hook off, restrip the wire, and if it's going into a commercial grade and it just needs to be straight like this, well, perfect. Then you just put it in and then tighten it down. Or if you need loops again for the new receptacle, then you can make a new J hook and you're not gonna have any issues there at all because this has not been work hardened to where it's gonna cause it to snap off. So always always, always, if you remove wiring from a receptacle or a light switch or any kind of terminal screw, cut off the hook and start with fresh wire again. 
And that leads us to another bonus tip. If you want to try and avoid almost all of the mistakes and issues that I showed you in this video, you can eliminate so many of them by using one of these newer receptacles. Not this one here, but this one here by Levitin. No longer do shepherd's hooks need to be made to go around terminal screws. Don't need to worry about torquing those terminal screws down properly. They've got these little levers on them, much like the Wago 221s. You can just take your wire, put it into the hole, flip that lever down, that's locked into place. Then you go over to your neutral side, flip that white lever up, put your neutral wire in, flip the lever down. Now that's locked into place. And then your ground wire, same thing. Flip the lever up, insert the ground wire in, flip that lever down. And now this receptacle is completely wired up and ready to be used. And you don't have to worry about a lot of the issues that I talked about in this video. And for the most part, I do trust these in lower amperage situations, just like when it comes to using the Wago connectors. I really like them for some of your 15 amp applications. And while I do recommend this for the DIYer, and again, someone that's not real familiar with installing receptacles, I still personally think the best receptacle still on the market today is your commercial grade receptacle. Because while it doesn't have the levers on it, it does have those clamps, very easy to install very reliable so totally up to you but these are some added options and of course again like always I'll have links for these along with everything else you saw in this video down in the description down below when you click on those links it will take you directly to whatever you clicked on so you can check them all out for yourself now while we covered some of the biggest mistakes when it comes to installing receptacles there's a lot of other electrical connections that are made a lot of it comes down to connecting wires together and when it comes down to connecting those wires together there are also a lot of mistakes that a lot of people just do not realize that they're making when making what they think are very easy connections. Well, if you'd like to learn what some of those mistakes are, identify whether or not you're making some of them, and also learn what are the proper and better ways of making those connections so that they also last for a very long time, then click on this video right over here. You can find all that information in that video, and when you click on it, it will take you directly to it. So I hope you found value in this video, and if you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments still, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.